shares of Apple tumbling better than 7% right now in the pre-market. Set to lose better than $40 billion in market value right at the open. The technology company suffered its first ever decline in iPhone sales and its first revenue decline in 13 years. Second quarter results missed expectations. Apple reported revenue of $50.6 billion for the three-month period, first three months of the year. That was down 13% from the year earlier. Earnings per share were down 18% to a dollar ninety cents a share. Joining us right now is S&P Capital IQ Equity Research Analyst Angelo Zeno. Analyst, uh, Angelo, good to see you. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much for joining us. Your take on the Apple quarter last night. I know you think the stock is valued well, right? Yep. So overall, you know, our quick take here is, um, you know, this is kind of a perfect storm of bad news um, that the company has to deal with. Um, first off, you've got the iPhone 6 launch last year, which we think had a huge pull in effect of demand. Um, you've also got an, an iPhone 6S current cycle, which, you know, there just wasn't many enhancements to it. As a result, we're seeing a very soft cycle. And then overall, when you look at the, uh, the, the t total smartphone space right now, it's just not growing. And as a result, um, you know, I think we have to start looking at Apple a little bit differently, more of the cyclical oriented company than one that's going to just see this robust growth on a year over year basis. So if the smartphone market is not growing, is there any market within this whole space that is growing? And the people not buying smartphones, they have smartphones. Maybe there's a maturity there coming for the smartphone market. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happening. We're, the, the market is maturing. The, the belief here, um, or what Apple is looking to do, is clearly um, looking to enhance its position within the emerging uh, markets. So the iPhone I see launched in late March is, um, you know, one area of hope for investors. Um, the problem is it is lower price. It is a lower margin business, and we saw that in the guidance partially. Um, it's an issue, yeah. um, but nonetheless, you know, it's, it's also an opportunity because we think over the long term it will enhance their overall installed base and the opportunities with their services business we think will be a positive for the company. Can Apple ever be a growth company again? Is there some great, because again, can Tim Cook do what Steve Jobs did essentially and bring the company, it's not, you know, it's not a dead company, but if, you're, if it's a value company like an Exxon Mobil, right. then that's an altogether different business. Right, so the company is clearly being valued as one is um, s very similar to other hardware oriented companies like an HP at this point given the fall we've seen here after hours um, so it's a mid signal digit PE oriented company our view here is it can become a growth company again what they need to do is start utilizing that cash they've got a cash hoard of north of 230 billion at this point and the majority they, of that money is overseas about 90 percent of it is wow. overseas they need to start taking some risks if they want I to become a I said buy Netflix. Company. Just go out and buy Netflix. Buy a, buy a content company. Instead of Apple. No, Apple should go out and buy Netflix. Oh, Apple. Well, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And if you look at what Apple's done here over the last four years since their capital allocation strategy has started, they've returned over $160 billion to investors. Think about what they could have purchased over that time. Could have been a Tesla, could have been a Netflix, could have been both of them, so as well as other companies. What about Diego's <laughs> idea? What do you think about that? Is, that? is that something that you think the company would consider, buy content? Or like a Tesla, you know, I mean, obviously they're putting efforts into driverless cars. Yeah, I mean, our view is the connected car market is, is clearly a long-term opportunity for the company, as well as uh, further penetration within the living room, um, which the company really hasn't been focusing that much on. We think, you know, TV streaming eventually becomes a real opportunity and maybe eventually kind of hardware-oriented devices within the living room. Yeah. But that, you know, that remains to be seen when that eventually happens. Robbie, one thing I wanted to get your take on, and, 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 and Angela as well, how much of this gives us an indication of what's going on with the consumer? I think that the consumer is waiting to see what's the next big thing. Everyone wants to know what's the next big thing. I think Tim Cook knows that too. So does the Apple board, so do the Apple investors. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think um, when, it when we look at all, actually the smartphone market right now, I do think there's also a pause here ahead of the iPhone 7 launch. So the iPhone 7 had better be a, a big hit, I'd say, and you know, give consumers what they want because um, we do have loyal consumers out there. We just need them to start you know, buying these next generations. Is there a big surprise here? Are they going to surprise us like this is... Is there going to be some surprise? You know, unfortunately not. It's going to be more evolutionary mm -hmm. than anything. Okay. Um, I, but, you know, the, the thing here is that there are so many consumers that have held on to their device so long. Yeah. We think just the next generation launch will be enough to at least start helping. And the 7 the comes grow. out when? Uh, late September is late our expectation. September. Angelo Zeno, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.